ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्ण Today we are reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 4, Text Number 71. Brahmam stad gacha bhadram te Na bhaga tanayam ripam Kshama paya maha bhagam तथा संतीर भविष्यति ब्राह्मण ओ ब्राह्मण तत् देवफूर गच्छा युगो भाद्रम ओल स्पीशियसनेस ते अंतु यु ना भगाता नयम तु द सन ऑफ महाराज ना भा Nripam, the king, Ambarish. Kshama Paya, just try to pacify him. Mahabhagam, a great personality, a pure devotee. Tata, thereafter. Shantihi, peace. Pavishyati, there will be translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Śrīla Prabhupāda Ki Jai. O best of the Brahmanas, you should therefore go immediately to King Ambarisha, the son of Maharaj Nābhaga. I wish you all good fortune. If you can satisfy Maharaj Ambarish, then there will be peace for you. Purport. In this regard, Madhvamuni quotes from the Garuda Purana. Brahma di bhakti kut amsat amso naivam barishake naivanyasya chakrasya pi tatha pi harihishwaraha tathali ko pacheya tvat tisham ya shada adirat Brahma dayas chatat kirtim vyanjayam asuruttamam Mohana yacha dait yanam pramade nindan yacha anyartham cha swayam vishnur brahmadhyas cha nirashi sah manuse suttama chvas cha te shambhaktyadi bhir gunai brahmadir vishnu adhinatva Chapana ya cha kevalam Durvasas cha svayam rudras Tathat anyayam uktavan Tasyap anugrahar thaya Darpa na sartame vacha The lessons to be derived from this narration concerning Maharaj Ambarish and Durvasa Muni is that all the demigods including Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva are under the control of Lord Vishnu. Therefore, when a Vaishnava is offended, the offender is punished by Vishnu, the Supreme Lord. Therefore, when a Vaishnava is offended, the offender is punished by Vishnu, the Supreme Lord. No one can protect such a person, even Lord Brahma, O Lord Shiva. Thus, the end Bhaktivedanta purpose of 9th canto, 4th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled Ambarish Maharaj offended by Durvasa Muni. Narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narattamam 
ದೈವೀಂ ಸರಸ್ವತೀ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತೋ ಜಯು ಮುಧೀರೆಯೇತ್ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಯೇಶು ಅಭಾದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವಚ್ಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಸ್ತಿಕಿ ಎಂ ಸ್ವಾನುಭಾವಮಖಿಲ ಶುಚಿಸಾರಮೇಕ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮದೀಪಮತಿಥಿತೀರ್ಷತ ತಮುಂಧಂ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ಕರುಣೆಯ ಪುರಾಣ ಗುಹ್ಯ ತಂ ವ್ಯಾಸ ಸೂನೂಪಿ ಗುರು ಮುನೀನ ಮುಖಂ ಕರುತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಫಲುಗುಂ ಲಂಗಯಾತೆ ಗಿರಿ ತತ್ಕ್ರೀಪತಮಹಂ ವಂದೇ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ದಿನತಾರಿಣೆ ಅಜಾನುಲಂಬಿತಭುಜೌ ಕನಕಾವದಾತ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನೈ ಕಪಿತರೌ ಕಮಲಾಯ ತಕ್ಷೌ ವಿಶ್ವಂಬರೋ ದ್ವಿಜವರೋ ಯುಗಧರ್ಮ ಪಾಲೌ ವಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರೌ ವಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪ ಸಿಂಧೂಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶಿವ ಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಹಂಬ್ಲಿ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಅಸೆಂಬಲ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಇಲಾಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಿಪಾಲ್ ಗೋರ್ಖಸ್ ಗೋರ್ಖಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಆಸ್ಪಿಷಿಯಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಹೋಲಿ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ about krishna in brindavan to speak about krishna's blessings of vaishnavas is very much required as it is said how far the bird can fly in the sky sky is unlimited we simply doing this as much as purification for ourselves this is wonderful story about ambarish maharaj and this story happened in brindavan so to speak about the story which happened in brindavan in brindavan himself that's the greatest blessings of krishna so we can understand the essence in fact here is a lesson which we can derive from this story is very very essential if you really want to achieve perfection in life this is foundational principle of success if we remove this foundation then sarvanash is called sadhu ninda sadhu ninda this is the first very grave offense against the chanting of holy name offending the devotees of krishna is very 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 uh, serious subject matter and uh, if we can analyze all shivan bhagavatam we went through shivan bhagavatam we can see krishna very carefully guiding us shila vyasadev maharaj he very kindly guiding us through all these obstacles so we will not commit the same offenses shivan bhagavatam is nothing but the map this is a map which helps us to overcome all the obstacles in this material world because in material world so many slips between cup and lips any moment anything can happen like bomb you know to do something unthoughtfully it's very easy just like that to commit mistake we prone to commit mistakes knowingly or unknowingly agyat athava gyanat knowingly or unknowingly we doing so many mistakes offenses but we need to have some um map which can help us to avoid these offenses it is said that experience is a best teacher but only fools learning by no other way 
That's why Shrimad Bhagavatam given to us to show us how to do, how not to do. I was today and meditating on several stories in Shrimad Bhagavatam. Actually, all the stories. If you can just analyze all the stories, practically connected to how to of avoid the offenses and how to serve devotees, how to be humble. God gives, gives, and forgives, and man get, get, and forget. Forget the, the blessings. We're forgetting the blessings which we are getting from devotees, from Guru, from Krishna. You see? Kritagyata. One of the main foundational principles of spiritual life is gratitude. We have to be grateful. Because we always say, if you're not grateful, we are great fool. If you're not grateful, you're great fool. And Kritagyata means Kritagyata. Kritagyata means Krita huh, means we have to do something. Srila Prabhupada said that everybody has to work in this material world. In one lecture, Prabhupada said this world name is called Karma Krit. Everybody has to do karma in this world. Even in the mouth of lion, deer never enter automatically. Even lion has to catch the food. Everybody have to work. Krita, Gya. Gya means knowledge. Krita, Gya. We have to work with knowledge. If you're working blindly, Andhayan, Tandaru, Paniyamanasti, Pisa, Tantra, Murdam, Nibandaha. Blindly, if you're working blindly without knowledge, Gyana, Dipena, Bhashwataha we are definitely going to fall into ditch. Bandaha. So, Shrimad Bhagavatam is this touch light, knowledge, Mahapuran, as a sun reason in this age of Kali, to help us. Once, His, great, His Holiness in Trajumna Maharaj, He was sharing when they were in Sri Lanka, and they were distributing some food for needy people, poor people. And one day they were returning back from that function of fruitful life, and somehow other nature call was there and he requested the driver to stop the car. Please kindly stop the car, I need to go in the field. And it was dark pitch night. So Maharaj came out from the car and he went in the field. And driver as a seva, Vaishnava seva, he turned the car and wanted to highlight the field. So, Ma so it will be easy for Maharaj to walk because so many snakes and so many things can be. So when he was turning the car, he saw the billboard with skeleton like this. It's minefield, bombs. You know, Tamil Tiger uh, terrorists, they're putting bombs in the field. It was the minefield. Immediately driver, he, he screamed, Maharaj, stop! Like in Allahabad, Kahi bi ho, kahi bi ho. Whenever you are, stop. Don't move even inch. Because you don't know where are you now. Unknowingly sometimes we entering the area which is very dangerous. So he entered and he explained him, this is a bomb field, you know Maharaj, somehow you made it up to there. But don't take risks to make another step. Okay? So Maharaj, you know, even nature calls stopped, you know, what to do, out of fear. <laughs> and what to do now, you never know how to come out. You need a guidance. So they had to go to the headquarters of Tamil, uh, Tamil Tigers, you know, and just go in and they asked the map. Because when they're putting bombs, you know, you need some map. So in case you, take it, you need to take it out, you know where is bomb. You see? And then the officer came, very oh, sleepy, and they came at time. Okay, Maharaj, come. One step right, one step straight, you know, two steps uh, left or oh, right. Oh, what? Left or right? There's no mistakes in guidance. So it took for him, I don't know how many, few hours to come out. Because to commit mistakes takes no time. But to, re to repair the mistakes, you know, to break the hand, fracture, it takes no time. But then plaster perish, you know, months and months together to make it again normal. And it will be never no normal. I'm always giving example when you have the thread, you know, thread. Sometimes it's nice. But sometimes you can break the thread and, well, you can tighten it even, you know. But then when you can put the needle, if you want to sew something, <coughs> it's not possible to do anything with this thread anymore. Because the knot is there. For general public, it's seen, oh, it's normal, again normal. 
confirm. But it's actually not normal because not is there and very difficult to work when scar is there already. You see? So therefore, it is explained that the best secret of success is to have proper relationships with devotees. And to make proper relationships with devotees, we need the guidance. You can take it. I told you that all the stories in Srimad Bhagavatam related to the offenses to Vaishnavas and to service to the Vaishnavas. Padesha Saram. Hmm. We have to follow the footprints of our Mahajans. Tannam Arupa Charitari Sukirtananam. We have to glorify Krishna, his pastimes, and serve Vaishnavas. Jananugami. We have to follow them. And uh, interesting, you can take the story of Pandavas. What an offense to Draupadi was there. All Mahabharata started because of that. Dhruva Maharaj, Prithu Maharaj and Indra, Daksha, 4th Kendra Bhagavatam, Lord Shiva, you name it. Even, I mean, glorious personality like Indra Dev, you know, he is a GBC of universe, you see, it's like it doesn't matter ABC or GBC. He's a top Devaraj. Even sometimes has tendency to commit mistake. Even we know in Brahma Vimohan Leela, he makes such a grave offense by stealing coward boys against Brinjabasis. Indra, he did such a grave offense, we were discussing that all demons, they got a one, 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 one day visa only to Vrindavan. Indra got seven days visa. And he was the greatest culprit in Vrindavan by trying to destroy all the devotees, destroy Vrajdham, Krishna, all his near and dear. What grave offense it may be. And still Krishna killed all the demons, but he spared Indra. Okay, go and run the business. Continue do seva. He didn't kill Indra, though he was the most dangerous uh, attack ever in history. Wanted to destroy himself, Krishna himself, with all his relatives and near and dear. Still Krishna spared him, Name Bhakta Pranashiti. Because Krishna comes to this material world, Indrari Vyakulam Lukam. He comes to help Indra. But sometimes tendency is there to make mistakes. And uh, Maharaj Prithu, also devotee, and Indra, Maharaj also devotee. You see, conflict happens amongst devotees only. And Maharaj Prithu. He was doing so many uh, Rajasu Yagyas, sacrifices, 99. And then finally, one Rajasu Yagya left and Indra became envious. He became envious. And he came and stole the sacrificial horse. So not to make Yagya successful. And Ambarish, uh, I mean Prithu Maharaj, he was so kind, all right. He came in the form of Sadhu. And Prithu Maharaj said, it's okay. Let him take it. Okay, anyway, we can do another one. And another one he started. And again Indra came again in the ashes and again hide it as a devotee. Sadhu. Again stolen horse. Out of envy. Because he didn't want him to complete and to become next Indra. To remove me. Sometimes people attach to the positions and post. Puja, Pratishta. And ultimately, you know, Maharaj Parikshit, you know, actually Krishna came to him and said, listen, forgive him Indra. Sometimes devotional service is to renounce the fruits of your service. Don't be attached. Mahafali Shukadachanam. No need this yagya. Sometimes we can please Krishna by not doing something. Sometimes we are thinking, I have to complete, I have to do what I have to do when I have to do it. I have to do it. Stop born. But sometimes Niyamagraha is not at all favorable. Sometimes not to do something is devotional service. You see? Anukulyasya Krishna Nushilanam Bhakti Ruttama. Whatever is auspicious, we have to do that. And we have to have intelligence to understand what to be done, what not to be done. And Maharaj Parikshit, I mean, uh, Prithu Maharaj, he just decided, okay, forget it. Let me not do it this last yagya. Let it be 99. And guess what? Krishna became so pleased. Krishna brought Indra. Indra came with Vishnu. Though sacrifice was not completed, Vishnu manifested. You see? Even you didn't distribute the books like others, superheroes. 
I know one Mataji in Europe, she was distributing books in December marathon. And for the all months, all months completely, she could not distribute even single book. Amazingly, embarrassing. Everybody bringing big, big results, big, big books. And she is just going every day. I am going every day following the order of my Guru Maharaj. And amazingly enough, all months, no books distributed. And she was last day, 31st December, you know, midnight, half an hour before New Year comes. And she is with the tears in the eyes. She, she, she was standing with Bhagavad Gita in her hands. And she was praying to Krishna, Krishna, please, I have to distribute at least one book. You can do it to me. And she was bitterly crying to Krishna, desperately praying, please, at least one book in marathon. And just 15 minutes before New Year, completion of marathon, one man came to her and said, oh, is it Bhagavad Gita? She said, she said yes. I'm looking for this book. Can I buy it from you? And she said, yes, yes, please. You, have, you please buy it for me. For, for me, buy it. And he bought this book. And she was so happy as if she distributed millions of books. You know, what we have, we're not appreciating. When we are losing, we are crying. But mercy is when we can appreciate even a little bit mercy we are getting. And guess what? That Prabhu who bought Bhagavad Gita became Brahmachari. He became devotee. It was only one shot, but exactly in blue eye. We don't know what will be the result. Sometimes we're distributing millions of books, thousands of books, because some Shardarji or some Sedji sponsored Dilli ka Dalali, Mukchik ne pet khali. So they just, they're distributing, they have so much funds. I just came to Brindavan. I was in Govardhan, there is so many resorts are there. Many people buying big, big bungalows, big, big, big houses like in Bridge Basundara. 90% cottages they bought because they have money. But nobody's staying there because they have no time. They're busy being busy. But to enter Vrindavan is not enough. We cannot buy even one speck of dust in Vrindavan. Therefore Krishna is not impressed by your 99 sacrificial yagyas, tapasya with big, big projects, super pooper hero positions. No! Rahu ganaita tapasana yati na chajjaya nirva panad grihadva na chandasa nirva chalagni suryer vina mahat padarajo bishekam Rahugan Maharaj and Jad Bharat, they discuss that. In conversation, the shloka comes. That Krishna, he never satisfied with great, great austerities in Himalayas, in cold water, in you know, Saraswati river or Alakananda, not by putting fire on your head around, I've seen in Haridwar, not by doing heavy tapasya, not by doing 10,000 bhakti shastras and bhakti vaibhavas and throwing shlokas here and there. No, by humble service, padarajo bishekam, padaraja, there's a dust from lotus feet of Vaishnavas. Very humble dust. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Dhuli Sadrisham Vichintaya. I want to become the dust. Mm. Really? That's the secret. It is explained if you really want to become the instrument in the hands of God, Nimitta Matra. If you want to become atom bomb in the hands of God, first we have to become atom. If you want to become atom bomb, you have to become atom. VIP, very insignificant person. Once I remember one very great Kathavachak in our society, Maharaj, he was giving class. And he was giving class and he somehow forget the shloka in Vrindavan only. And so, so many people like this were sitting and Brahmacharis were sitting. And Brahmacharis were one of the disciples was there of that Maharaj. And Maharaj forgot the shloka. And when Maharaj said, um, anyone knows that shloka? Uh, what shloka? Uh, do you remember the shloka? And one of the, another Kathavachak, speaker of Bhagavatam, very famous in Nuskon that time. He was sitting right in front of Maharaj. And Maharaj said, hey, you know the shloka, what is that shloka? And that devotee said, I don't know Maharaj. Oh no, you know. No, I don't know Maharaj. Oh, it's okay. And Maharaj continued speaking class. After completing the class, Maharaj left. And all devotee came to that particular devotee and said, Prabhuji, you know the shloka? And Prabhuji said, I don't know. Sorry. And he also left. Of course he knew the shloka. 
But there is no foolishness to be more fun, more intelligent in front of your guru. Amar guru, amar murkho de kukuriya sasan. We have to remain always fools in front of spiritual master. It is explained, you know, in Skanda Purana, when you remember the sadhu every morning, all day will be auspicious for you, if you remember the sadhu. That's the conclusion of Shastra. Prasanga majaram pasam atmanam kava yoviduhu sa eva sadhu shukrito moksha dwarama pavritam. Every intelligent man, Kavayo, he knows that attachment in material world is a cause of bondage and pass to the hell. But if the same attachment applied to the sadhu, that attachment becomes that door for liberation. Saiva sadhu shukrito moksha dvarama pavritam. What kind of sadhu? Prabhupada Maharaj says, Mahiya sam padaraju bishekam niskin chananam navrinita yaval. We have to do abhishek with the dust of Vaishnava's feet. Dust. Charanera dhulia, charanera jhal, Vaishnavir uchishtayatin mahabal. This is the greatest treasure. Even Krishna says, I am getting dust, I am following my Vaishnava, my devotee, I am following him because I am waiting when dust from a lot of feet will come to my head. So I will be giving, I will be able to give blessings to others. I am getting blessings from the dust of feet of my Vaishnavas. They are much more greater than me. Krishna says to Udhava. So that's why we have to understand that uh, um, we have to be Kritagya. In other uh, meaning of Kritagya, according to Sabda Kosh, Kritagya means dog. One of the meaning of Kritagya means dog. Because dog always grateful. You have seen. And dog can recognize the master in any dress he is, or night dress, or suit, business dress, or even he taking bath in. You know, naked. Never mind, real dog will recognize the master. So similarly, real devotee, he will be able to recognize Krishna's hand in every situation. And he can remain the humble. Tate nu kampam susumik shamanam bunjana evat vakritam vipakkam. Every situation sent to us is nothing but arrangements of Krishna for our purification. If we can see in that Mai Pashyati Sarvatra, if devotee can see every situation as Krishna's mercy. It's nice to see Krishna's mercy when somebody giving us something and we're getting in good health, when the sun is shining, super. But when there is earthquake in our spiritual life, when life will throw you down with no light around, I firmly put on tilak and chant the holy na sound. Don't worry profit or the loss. Surrender life to supreme boss. And far and wide try spread his fame by chanting sweet and holy name. In human life we have a gift, an opulence and treasure. The true devotees of the Lord who want to give him pleasure. Keep Guru's order in the heart, example his behold. To whom you meet, give Krishna's feet two lotuses to hold. This is the greatest treasure and uh, real dust from the lotus feet of Vaishnavas, Padaraja Ubishekam. This is the instructions of spiritual master. We have to take the dust on our head and carry for the rest of our life. That's the secret. Ekeha Kuru Nandana. Vyavasayatmika Buddhi, Srila Prabhupada explains, based on commentary of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, that the secret of success in spiritual life. Take the instructions of spiritual master and give your life and soul for that. You see, it is explained, we have to be grateful. Raghunath Das Goswami, he explains in Manasa Shiksha, how he grateful for what he have got. Guru, Brindavan, Gordhan, Radha Kunda, I got everything. What do we need? We have everything. Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtan, Bhagavad Shravan, Mathuravas, Shri Murti Rasharadhaya Sivan. There is nothing left. We got everything. But still sometimes Ashantasya Kutak Sukham. There is no satisfaction. As I said, you know, Kalipit na bajan gopala lilo apna kantimala. So when people are hungry, somebody once said who told me, what is real preaching? What is real preaching? Prachar bhojan ka dakkar in Hindi they say. When you're eating, you know, enough and your stomach completely full, burp comes. That's preaching. If we are ourselves dissatisfied inside. 
if ourselves we are just quarreling and fighting new fight new new fight that's very important that's what Srila Prabhupada said after my departure one devotee came and said Prabhupada you are so sick can we exchange I will give you my young age to you and you give me your old age as a Puru did to Maharaj Yayati in Bhagavatam I want to do the same thing I am your son I want to give you my young age you continue to translate the books and give me your old age let me suffer and Srila Prabhupada said oh that's very good sentiment very nice <laughs> but that's that's not what I want and then next what what goes his famous quotation if you really want to please me please cooperate together in devotional service after my departure that will please me much more and that's Shrimad Bhagavatam for Scanto Bhagavatam 30th chapter shloka number 8 when Krishna came and gave darshan to Prachetas why he gave God darshan to them not because of their 10,000 super pooper tapasya under the water no he said I came and give darshan to you because I am very much pleased by your mutual friendship friendship team together everyone achieves more such a nice cooperation you see it's a wonderful exa example to please Srila Prabhupada it, there is one saying you know there is nothing is impossible for the group of people for whom does not matter who will take the credit at the end everybody beneficial like yesterday wonderful example really I was appreciating the cooperation of team management uh, of temple so very nicely they were helping and we were working as a team together everyone achieves more team and uh, Himamarinji came and uh, it was uh, very quick very quick that's why it said when relationships are very nice managements follow as a shadow when relationship very nice then you know if we decided who can stop us we just decided that's it like this that's why it said when we remembering sadhus when we remembering Krishna even most difficult thing become very easy Shukaram Bhavet very easy but those who remember Krishna when, when we forgetting Krishna even small things becomes like mountain difficult very difficult and you know what I was realizing if you really want to cross all this ignorance Rajotamo Bhava I was reading Srimad Bhagavatam 7th canto in um, it is explained in 15, 15 chapter shloka number 25 when Yudhishthira Maharaj explains how to overcome all this ignorance all so many many things greed lust and other things big list he gave him and Narada Muni very peacefully answering him you have to meditate on that you have to remember the what is the consequences of greed you have to make strong, strong determination to overcome the lust etc etc and then naturally Yudhishthira Maharaj just feeling like it's too much you know very difficult in one lifetime all big list impossible can you give me a shortcut please just one shortcut what should I do and he says wonderful shloka 7 15 20 25 he says to overcome ignorance we have to come to uh, Rajaguna from Rajaguna to Sattva Guna and from Sattva Guna you have to go to Vishuddha Sattva even cross Nishtray Gunya Bhavarjuna you have to cross all these modes of nature Guna is Vichitra you have to cross it but all these things very much possible by the service and pleasing spiritual master if you can please spiritual master all this tremendously difficult task become very much possible and uh, you know Vishwan Chakravarti Thakur explains in the commentary to his next shloka 7 15 26 he says that those who are thinking those who are thinking that spiritual master is a mortal human being even you are doing bhakti devotional service but you are thinking the spiritual master is a normal human being it's useless even you are doing bhakti unless you are serving devotees unless you serving Krishna have you don't have guru bhakti and you thinking spiritual master is an ordinary person even you are doing bhakti is useless Shramaya Vahi Kevala Vishwan Chakravarta could explain so that's why we have to be very careful not to offend devotees and who is the guru everybody can become our guru we know this 24 gurus are there 
Anyone can become guru for us. Even ant in Vrindavan can become guru. Even monkey. Yesterday monkey taught us very nice lesson. Everybody, if you can see Krishna's hand everywhere, oh, oh Krishna wants to teach me something. I was doing my puja a couple of days ago in Govardhan and I was sharing this example with devotees. I was doing puja and a Russian group came and I had to take them around and we went to sleep very late, around one o'clock. Whew, Kirtan Bhajan, it was like reunion with old friends. It's such a, and you know, like that, very difficult to put break. And we went to sleep very late. So I had to wake up a little bit late, six o'clock I woke up. And when I woke up, outside of our ashram, so it was one tree, Champa, beautiful flowers are there. And I usually used to those flowers to do my puja. And I saw, I could not take bath at that time yet. And I saw in the window, one old lady came and she was plugging the flowers from my tree, from, from my Thakurji. I thought for a second, you know, how come she is plugging our trees from ashram? And she was plugging the trees. And, and practically all the flowers, Champa, was plugged already. And I was thinking, what will happen to my puja? I don't have flowers. But then next moment I thought, okay, anyway, it's Vrindavan. And she's plugging not for herself. Must be also she has Krishna. Doesn't matter who will take the credit. Let she take. Okay, let her take the flowers. And she took the flowers. And took time for me, half an hour, I took bath, put tilak. And I went to collect flowers for my puja. And amazingly enough, I saw this tree, quite tall tree. And I saw all the flowers where, from where I used to pick it up. Empty, no flowers. But then I stretched myself a little bit high. And there were plenty flowers on different level. And because I was a little bit higher than that lady. That lady was kind of small. She could not stretch her hand that far. But I was taller than her and I was able to stretch my hands and I collected as many flowers as usually. Just a little endeavor. And then when I collected last flower, I noticed that above my hand, which I cannot stretch, there is another layer of bunch of flowers, so many flowers. And I thought somebody who is more higher than me will be able to collect much more flowers. No problem for him also. The only thing qualification, he has to become taller than me. So similarly, in spiritual life, I realized in Vrindavan there is no lack of realizations, there is no lack of flowers to, for anyone. The only qualification, we have to be willing to grow. And if we don't want to grow, we want to remain on the same level, then we'll become fight, 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 because no flower is my flower, my, your flower, my flower. No, there's enough flowers. The only thing we have to always grow, grow, grow. And that's why it's very, very important to understand that our business is simply to become humble servant of Vaishnavas. And by serving devotees, Bhaktan Saraswati said that this is a Yuga Dharma, Vaishnava Seva actually. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaching us. That's all the heroes of Srimad Bhagavatam teaching us. We have to serve devotees. We have to be very, very humble, VIP, very insignificant people. That's very true. We are not brahmacharis, not grihastas, not sannyasis. We are simply servants. Naham vipro na chanarapati na pi vaishyo na shudro Naham varni na chagriha pati na vana stoya tirva Kintu pradhyan nikila paramananda purnam ritabdir gopi bhartur padakamalayur Dasa, 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 anudasa We are just servants. It's easy to speak. But we have to learn how to serve devotees because Krishna is accepting attitude. Sometimes you can serve by being guru. Very easy to see Guru is called Tatastha Lakshana. But there is Swarupa Lakshana also. Somebody can see Guru as a Guru, easy to see, but very difficult to see Guru as a disciple. He became Guru because his Guru told him to do so. And he doing Guruship as a service to others. And sometimes somebody cleaning the pots in the kitchen. We have one devotee in, devotee in Nepal. For the last 15-20 years, he's cleaning pot. Pots in the kitchen. You see? Perfect. And don't forget that pots, this is Balaram. Balaram himself. To do puja to Krishna Balaram and to clean pots in the kitchen is the same because this is, you know, Tadiyanam Samarchanam. Tadiyana, it is connected with Balaram. One big, big professor came to Srila Prabhupada and said, Swamiji, I want to live in the temple with sadhus. Can I? And he was very, very renowned professor. He came to temple and Prabhupada said, why not? Okay, you live. Very kind. 
And what will be my seva? You go to kitchen and kitchen and clean the pots. Big, big VIP professor. And he actually was sincere enough. Like, you know, Prataparudra Maharaj, he was sweeping the floor and simple. Simplicity is Vaishnavata. He went and cleaned the pots. After some days, his friends came from other professors and said, such and such professor, where is he? Where is his office? Where is his reception? What reception? He's in the kitchen, cleaning pots. <laughs> what? So because in material world, people knew him as a super duper, you know, top writer and whatnot. Dean of university, you know, chairman. And he is cleaning pot. What are you talking about? And they went and sure enough, in the apron, and he was sitting with black with spots and cleaning pots like this. <laughs> People surprised, what are you doing, Professor Sab? So they went back to Prabhupada and told him, Srila Prabhupada, Swamiji, how long he is going to clean the pots? Do you know who is he? Do you know who is he? And Prabhupada said, hmm. He will clean the pots, the steel pots of Krishna. Till what time? Till when he will make hole in that pot. <laughs> and through that hole he will go back to Godhead. <laughs> you see? So that's why, uh, anyway, we can talk long, long time. I want to keep some questions session. That's the principle. It's so simple. Prabhupada wanted to create one astrologer. Bhavananda Prabhu, uh, he, he told us in Mayapur no, uh, that uh, once they went to astrologer and one astrologer told that Srila Prabhupada, such a great personality, he will create the house in which all world can live. And when he came and told about this to Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, yes, that's true. Prabhupada was proud that we have international society. Is it not amazing? It is amazing. I have friends from China, they came. Wang Kao, Xinjie Xin, Ni Hao Ma. So big, big, big crowd came. And one devotee told me, Prabhuji, before Krishna consciousness, you know, I was so fallen. I was eating anything moving, I was eating that, except chairs. <laughs> he said, I know who we are and who can forgive. Such a person can forgive who was forgiven one day himself. If you were forgiven one day, you will understand what does it mean for kindness, causeless kindness. So that's actually the lesson. And therefore Durvasa Muni, he comes to Ambarish Maharaj and grabs his feet. And guess what? Ambarish Maharaj, for one year he was waiting. Durvasa Muni, he was waiting for him. He didn't even take any food. Where are you Maharaj? I'm still waiting for you. Oh no, you are really great. Then Durvasa Muni realized. What a great devotee is Ambarish Maharaj. And he was Grihastha also. So great devotee is not necessarily supposed to be sannyasi only or Brahmachari. No. Even Ambarish Maharaj, his great devotee, is Grihastha. Arjuna, Bhagavad Gita was given to Arjuna. And Arjuna had four wives. He was a responsible king. Bhaktosimi Priyosimi. So we have to be very, very dear to Krishna. Endearing Krishna and simple service. I will conclude with a small story. I was just today I was reading this story. In uh, 1633, uh, it was one representative of Eastern Company, Ralph Cartwright. You know, he came to India to make trade business, trade business with India. Uh, and when he came uh, to do the trade business with India, he came to Orissa. And at that time in Orissa, it was this, you know, uh, Muhammad Zaman, king. Muhammad Zaman, he was a king, Muslim king. And the ships of England Empire came, this is the Eastern Company. They arrived, but they were not allowed to parking, eh? port. They didn't, they not allowed. And then they took the boat and they went by boat to, the, to ask the permission from Muhammad Zaman. Can we do some parking here? You can give some space. And as Muhammad Zamad, what he did, that was the principle. He put his feet on his knee and he said, you have to kiss my feet. For English Lord to kiss the feet 
of some Muslim guy, you know, or some and English people they thought this is in India is like tribal communities. This guy tribe people, Aborigines. That's the way I th thinking like that because they're so proud. And what he did, he just simply, all right. If you know why, no need to explain what. Of course, we know that's. I want to bring the principle. I'm not saying that we have to do it all the time, but for the sake of higher cause. He was able to ban himself and he did it and he by this simple framed humility framed act he endeared himself to himself to the king and king allowed okay no problem all cost is yours you can park anywhere you can do whatever you want yeah. if for the benefit, material benefit which is destruction complete people can do that cannot be become servant of the servant of the dasanu dasu bhavitasmi bhuya manak smarita shupatir gunam sti grinita va karma karoto kaya vritrasura he is praying let me become servant of the servants of the lord because by being with them and endear myself to them i can always remember krishna and that's the essence of all scriptures to remember krishna never forget and we will be able to remember krishna at the moment of our death Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki Maybe just one question if somebody really wants to ask a question. Yes, please. Give the mic. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you for the wonderful class. My question is. You mentioned about endeavor. This question is linked to endeavor and management because I'm part of the management. <coughs> so the question is sometimes we have some specific cases or some conflicts. We try our best and put some endeavor to the level. And and because of the time factor, we think whatever decision we have taken is good enough. Mm -hmm. But certain times, as a part of an individual, I feel if we would have put more endeavor. We will not come up with the right position. Not necessarily because sometimes it's 80, 20, 80 time, 80 percent of the time we are right, 20 percent of the time we are not right. But because of the time factor, we say okay, this decision is good. But sometimes if we put more endeavor, we know the more truths and more facts, and our decision can be 100 percent right. So, would you like to comment on any of this? Of course, I can. I am part of management for 25 years. So, uh, well, I can. Is it's itself class itself to answer your, to your questions very very sensitive question because to be part of management is very thankless task believe me it's very thankless task very difficult to please everyone Srila Prabhupada said you cannot expect utopia you cannot just even Krishna had enemies Shishupal, Dantavakra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Prabhupada had so many enemies and envious people what can be done but my my realization first of all to make any decision we should not make it single-handedly it has to become sangha sangha of equal-minded devotees so svajatiya because one finger cannot do anything together i am because we are that's the principle we are using in our management because if we decide something together and it may be not very correct even Anyway, we together decided no one to blame. Anyway, we, are, we did it together. Right? Because in Kali Yuga, Yagya Sang Kirtana Pragyay. Samyak Kirtan, glorification of Krishna together. So anything we do together, even sometimes mistakes, well, it's our mistake. It's not somebody's mistake. Because when you're making decision alone, it may be a little bit dangerous also. You may win the battle, but you can lose the war. I have experience, I have many experiences, but we have to learn to make any decision. We have to learn one principle to see Saragrahi, to see the good quality like bumblebee of any situation, any devotee, because every devotee even did big mistake, for example, still his devotee. I was uh, in charge of Allahabad temple one time and uh, I remember, shall I, shall I tell you a small example? I think it will be like, um, and I was, before in Russia, I was Sankirtan leader. I love to distribute books. But somehow other, you know, destiny, a little different. Man propose, God dispose. 
and I end up as a management team. So, and one day, one devotee, very old devotee, his name is Subramanyam name, from South India. But he actually, he, he was in Calcutta, big businessman. He came and said, Prabhuji, can I stay in temple? Because I traveled all over the India for six years, and I've been in each and every ashram, Sai Baba, Brahma Kumari, Om Shanti, everywhere I traveled. Shankaracharya, I was looking for guru. But I found that there is no more greater person than Srila Prabhupada. And I decided to surrender my life to the place where his temple. I said, well, and I want to distribute his books, he said. That thing really captured my heart. Okay, he wants to become Sankirtan devotee. Okay, stay with us. And after some times, I, not, I noticed that he had some quarrel with devotees fighting. And I'm making very short. And one evening in Brahmacharya Ashram, I woke up because of some fist fighting. I was thinking, man, what is this? I have to stop it as a management team. I have to make decisions straight away. And I opened the door and I saw this Subramaniam, very old man, fighting with young Brahmachari. Literally, fist fighting. I had to come in between. Stop! What are you doing? Sadhu Ninda, what is this? Forget it. This is <laughs> sadhu killing. <laughs> I said, stop, what are you doing, man? Why? And he said, a big list of complaints comes to me. And as a temple in charge, I have to make decisions. And what is the complaint? He never comes from Angularati, which was true. He's an old man, he never comes from Angularati. And then he actually, uh, every Guru Puja, the moment Guru Puja starts, this guy going out from the temple somewhere. I saw it also a couple of times, it's true. And then on the top of that, he is eating tobacco. <laughs> and that also was true. I noticed because he was always doing like that. <laughs> but because he was Sankirtan devotee, I really was covering him up. Because somehow or other, every evening, he used to bring so much money. He used to distribute all the books and all the incense. <laughs> really. And just because of that qualification, because he was... Every single day from 8 o'clock he used to leave and come evening time 8 o'clock. All day he was distributing books and he used to bring big amount of money. So I was thinking, no, but this is too much already because it's such a complaint, feast fighting. I have to request him, Prabhuji, maybe you can do it outside. You have to leave the temple. And I'm almost about to make decision myself. I didn't consult with anyone. But he literally dropped in the knees and started to cry in front of me. Prabhuji, please, 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 keep me. Don't kick me out. <laughs> and I was just hardly controlling myself. I choked myself. How to tolerate this old man? He's like my father. And I'm just begging from me. And, and I became in Nepal, as I say, Dosrimati Kupoi Kuname Basaroi, Nagharka Nagharka. From one side, I really love him. But from another side, I just cannot compromise principles. Okay, said, Prabhuji, come to my office. We have to make a talk with you. As you said, a little bit extra mile. I will take, okay, let me make extra endeavor to understand the situation. Very difficult to understand externally. Okay, let's sit down. Tell me. See, how I can keep you, because I'm management team, how I can keep you here because you're not coming from Anglarati. And he said, Prabhuji, I have such a severe back pain. Actually, I wake up 3 o'clock morning every day and chanting Japa in my bed. Lying down and chanting Japa. Because I just cannot stand up morning time, it's very cold in Allahabad. I just cannot stand up. Very severe back pain. So I am changing my rounds before 6 o'clock in, in the bed. I said, oh. It means he's not snoring, he's, not, he's waking up 3 o'clock. Because of body not cooperating, he's lying in the bed, chanting. Oh, hmm. And um, next Brahmastra, okay, but next, you're not coming for Guru Puja at least. At least till 7.30 you can manage to stand up, no? Yes, I do manage, but you know what? In Allahabad, I have only one Ayurvedic doctor here in Baluaghat. And this doctor only free by 7.30 to 8. And he told me to come and visit and he's giving me medicine treatment for my back and medicine. He gave me timing only from 7.30 to 8. So I have to go to appointment every day to the doctor. Therefore, please forgive me. What to do is kind of... I mean, overlapping Guru Puja, what to do? But I have to go for the sake, because I have to distribute books all day. I have to be fit. So I thought, why? Reasonable. And then I said, but you are, you are eating tobacco. <laughs> I had last Brahmastra in my quiver, you know. Cook, 
यू यू ईटिंग तबाको प्रभु जी दिस इज नॉट तबाको माय आयुर्वेदिक डॉक्टर टोल्ड मी ही टोल्ड मी यू नो यू हैव सम अल्सर यू नो यू हैव सम स्टमक प्रॉब्लम पेन आल्सो एंड इट्स बेस्ट मेडिसिन इज तुलसी सो यू ऑफर तुलसी टू कृष्णा ड्राइड make powder and every morning eat the tulasi for empty stomach you know <laughs> and eat tulasi so it's tulasi and he took the packet and said see this is tulasi see to and I, tulasi man <laughs> i was believe me he was crying and i was as tears in my eyes subramanian prabhu please forgive me and we just you know we embraced tightly hugged each other i said who god bless me you know so so i would not kick out such a wonderful devotee you know from temple and he was so grateful i kept him and i just said brahmachari you bekuf you fool don't you understand a little more deeper the reason take extra mile to understand the real situation because sometimes we are very impersonal very impersonal management makes us very dry it's true because sometimes you have to black and white but spiritual life is big rainbow it's not black and white at all and a last example i'll give you you have to give me mantra to stop me so and <laughs> i was in los angeles some time ago and uh, it was like propat um, celebration festival was there and all maharajas came radhanath maharaj giriraj maharaj you know bhavananda bhagwan all those those who left already also came everybody gurudas prabhu everybody came there so it was like hundreds of disciples proper disciples there and we happened to be there like mosquito among the elephants we were sitting there was one devotee from europe and uh, shri radhanath maharaj gave very nice class that we are such a wonderful family prabhupad created such a wonderful family we are all family uncles and brothers and sisters and you know god brothers like that that makes true it's like you know prabhupad said we have to create home of love and devotion when he sent prabhu vishnu maharaj and uh, mahavishnu maharaj to nepal he said you have to create strong hold of krishna consciousness and we were thinking later on what hold could be and hold means home of love and devotion that's what we have to create home of love and devotion and uh, i was thinking it was really um vibrating in my heart such a nice lecture maharaj gave we are family and everybody stand up after the lecture about to leave and i was sitting with that devotee and that devotee said to me you know prabhu since we are family and this is wonderful opportunity to make relationship with family members whom we don't even know sometimes let's go and hug everyone not to be imitated but prabhu ji prabhu ji mata ji mata ji so this but point is that i was sitting okay good idea why not and everybody were in literally in ecstasy so i was thinking my antenna was working like radar whom to hug first and i found gurudas prabhu gurudas prabhu because i saw him only in proper dilamrita photo only that time oh it must be gurudas prabhu and i said okay this and my i really ekha hakurunandana i came to him and tap him prabhu ji yes are you gurudas yes you are my uncle and i am patridas can i hug you <laughs> just like that it was kind of ice breaking though and can i just hug you and he said why not and we just hug like anything and guess what for the next 3 days of festival we were like friends hey patri hey gurus prabhu ji hari krishna we were like family member and then i was thinking who is next and i saw and everybody so happy everybody walking and i saw giriraj maharaj oh no okay but anyway we came ding 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 and he said maharaj yes and he you know Yes, he's very very humble. <laughs> Maharaj, um, excuse me. Uh, you're my uncle. Can I just uh, hug you? And he said, "Why not?" <laughs> and I was thinking, no, somebody has to make photo. Otherwise, I'll not believe myself. And he just hugged me like this, very lovingly, and put his hand like this, and we hugged. And then he said, okay, "Sit down. Where are you from? From Nepal? Oh, you are from Nepal. You know?" He said. When my father came to take me back to America in Juhu, you know, you know that story, right? So when oh, oh, why he's not going to America? Prabhupada said, "Why you are not going to America? I don't want. He doesn't want. You know, so Prabhupada was mediating. 
And finally he said, no, 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 you have to be gentlemen. You have to give time to your parents. Take them. And Giriraj Maharaj told me, you know where I took them first? I took them to Nepal. And I like that country. And I came back, and then Rishikesh, and then I came back to Juhu, and I told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you have to send somebody to preach to Nepal. Therefore, this, I encourage Prabhupada to send somebody to preach to Nepal. And I told him, oh, Sarvakkarana Karanam, who is the cause of preaching of Nepal? You are the cause of preaching of Nepal. And, I, and he was smiling, and I was smiling. And then, in this way, you know, we went, and then Radhanath Maharaj came, Maharaj, can I hug you? Maharaj hugged us, you know, it was his, in his loving way. And later on, on and on, and one year later, I met Gurudas Prabhu in Juhu. It was 40 years anniversary of Rasbi Hariji, and I was also kind of helping there, and until late night, I couldn't finish my japa. And I was in guest house, I was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare. And I saw somebody pulling his suitcase at night, 11.30 at night, pulling his suitcase. And I looked, and it was Gurudas Prabhu. I said, Gurudas Prabhu. Oh, Padri! We, I mean, after a long time, that hug is working for a long time. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I said, can I help you? I, I grabbed this, said, oh, I'm coming from San Francisco, 20 hours flight, man. Too much tired, I'm completely dishausted. I mean, exhausted. I, we pulled him, with one Brahmachari, to his room, and he dropped on his bed. Whew. And I said, I'm so happy to see you, Prabhuji. And then I said, can I ask you just one question? He said, 11.30 at night, question? <laughs> And I asked him, at least one, Buddha enters Parasparam, just one realization. Because he was in management for many years, he was president here. Right? First president, Gurudas Prabhu in Yamuna Mataji. So, I said, do you have any realizations? What is the most, how to say, <laughs> I'm forgot, I'm very much afraid to go to another story, I'm just trying to. Uh, he said, one realization you had in, in your association with Srila Prabhupada, one realization. That Top realization you remember about your relationship with Srila Prabhupada. Did he ever taught you a lesson? And he said, oh yes, he ha taught me a very heavy lesson. Okay, listen, boom. And he sit down and for the next 45 minutes, he, he gave us class for few of us about that heavy lesson Prabhupada taught him. And he said, Prabhupada said, all lawyers are liars. <laughs> What was that lesson? I will not tell you. Because you don't have time. Oh, you want to hear? A few minutes. The top lesson he taught him. Should I, should I continue? Shri <laughs> Radhanath Maharaj always saying, Shall I continue? <laughs> By one time loudly chanting Haribol, otherwise management will curse me. You know, you stopped already. Overlap 15 minutes. Should I continue? Okay, okay, I have to tell the story. Since I said A, hey, I have to say Z. So, he said, when he was registering the, all the papers, you know, Gurudas Prabhu was responsible for registering things and papers and everywhere, all the projects and working with Indira Gandhi and all the lo legal things he was doing. And uh, anyway, just really very briefly, he was registering organization. He was registering organization. And he was going to India, bureaucracy is too much, you know, to go through all the instances and to make papers done. So finally, after a long time, he just, whew, he did it. And in the process of registering organization, I believe it's Juhu Temple, he was just registering, going through the papers, and Prabhupada was very quick. He is not waiting. Whatever you have to do now, do it immediately. Prabhupada never waited. So he was doing these things and while registering that papers, Srila Prabhupada was so keen to see me. Gurudas was sharing Prabhu. So he used to call me many, many times a day. Where is Gurudas? And he used to come to his room. Yes, Srila Prabhupada, Dandavat, Pranam. Uh, give me that glass of water. Yes, Prabhupada, go. That secretary is there, he could do it. Then he, Prabhupada called him and for very, very simple reason he called him um, whatever. Give me that gamcha. Okay, thank you. Go. And many, many times he used to come during the day, five, seven times, whatever. And he was asking secretary, why Prabhupada calling me for this kind of small, small things? Don't you understand? Prabhupada just want to make sure that he wants to see you all the time. He loves you like anything. And he said, I felt Prabhupada loved me so much for any reason he wanted to see me. Because he had such a feeling for me. 
very good. Anyway, so I was thrilled, you know, Romancha Kampa Srutarango, very nice. Prabhupada, such a personal feeling, touch. And then he registered the papers, he said, and I brought to Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada, I did it. So, Prabhupada, oh, Prabhupada opened the papers. And he, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sanyasi. And the other names, members. Another member, Sanyasi. Another one, member, another. And Prabhupada closed the papers. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sanyasi. Sanyasi, <coughs> founder Acharya. Prabhupada actually was very heavy on that small line, negligence. Not just Sanyasi, founder Acharya. And he said, I, I wouldn't understand that time, what happened? Lawyers are liars. <laughs> and after that moment, Prabhupada just became so angry. He never ever called me in his room. He never even speak to me. And every morning, every morning, he used to go to morning walk, you know, to the sea beach, morning walk. And he never used to call me anymore after that day. Not only that, he didn't even want to look at me. I was thinking, I was deprived. It's like, you know, millionaire lost the check. You know, he just lost the opulence. How come? He became addicted to Prabhupada's attention. But now Prabhupada completely neglecting him, completely. So after many days, he could not take it. So he said, I make a plan. I knew where Prabhupada will be walking to the sea beach and I, on that way I hide myself behind the pillar. So when Prabhupada will be walking, I will jump out from the pillar and say, Haribo! I will draw attention of Prabhupada to myself. To that, he make a plan, very careful plan, waiting all morning. Oh, Prabhupada walking. And Prabhupada was walking and he was hiding behind the pillar. And then Prabhupada was about a few meters to reach. And he came out from the pillar. Hi, Prabhupada. And Prabhupada turned back and went the opposite direction. No way. It was like heartbroken, experience, breaking experience. No, Prabhupada can't do it to me, you know. Prabhupada just walked completely different direction. Didn't want even to see me. No. So I have to re-register the papers. And he went through all procedure to re-register the papers. And he wrote down founder, acharya, so whatever, to take the trouble to all these things from zero. Again, he did it, but make sure that the founder, acharya is there. And then Prabhupada, he came to Prabhupada, I did it again. Please take it. Kuduk, kuduk, kuduk. Waiting, what will be the reaction? And Prabhupada, oh, founder, acharya. Hmm, very good. But he said, Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, you. Ah, in the beginning, in the paper said, you want to take Iskon from me? You want to remove me from Iskon? No way, Prabhupada, no. Then where is founder Acharya? That was the reason. And then when he made new papers, he gave Prabhupada, founder Acharya, founder Acharya, founder Acharya. Oh, very nice. But Prabhupada, we didn't have intention to remove you, please. You should not think that we had this desire. No, no, no. But Prabhupada said, but you give me the chance to think so. Means, he said, no impersonal approach. In, in loving relationships, details are very significant. Loving relationships made out of details. So relationships amongst Vaishnavas based on very personal touch. We cannot expect people to lend our, their helping hand unless we will be able to touch their heart. Same thing with Guru. Guru is not, you know, simple person. Shalagram Shila is not simple stone. Naraka Buddhi. We have to respect everyone as my gurus. That's why Srila Prabhupada, he respected each and every disciple, each and every devotee in his con as my gurus. Because my Guru Maharaj sent all of you to help me to serve him. That's why let us develop this vision and to see each other as representatives of Krishna, as Krishna's hand in our spiritual advancement. So we will collect many, many, many flowers every day by growing higher and higher and it will be no any lack and scarcity of anything for us. Whether we are managers, whether we are zero or hero, whether we are ABC or GBC, let us stay together and to make strong hold, home of love and devotion for Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, key! Thank you. Hare Krishna. Does that make sense?